Hello students, today we are going to learn about handling various fabrics for laying, marking and cutting. Coming to the different types of layouts. After preparing a fabric for cutting, once patterns are ready for cutting, the next step would be the layout patterns on fabrics for cutting. For this, ensure that all necessary patterns are labeled properly. Labeling includes indication of center front, center back, grain, fold, number of pieces to be cut and fitting lines if patterns include seam elevances. However, it is essential to remember that some pattern pieces need to be cut in more numbers than the rest. For example, collars, cuffs, pocket flaps, in which case layout must be laid on more than once, that is if one of the two layers. If the preparation of the patterns are made, one can proceed with the layouts. The factors that determine yardage required also influence the pattern layout. They are independent on each other and these factors are design, pattern size, fabric width, nature of the design on the fabric, design with up and down such as napped, printed, checks and nature of the checks. Follow indications on the layouts discriminately. There are five typical layouts. One has to choose appropriate layout depending on the requirement of the layout or design. In general, for layouts that require folding, ensure that while folding, right sides should face each other. Cut pieces that must be in more than one piece at a time to the extent possible. This avoids risk of cutting two or more identical parts, like example, two right sleeves. Laying can be done in variety of ways before pattern pieces are positioned for cutting. The type of folds used depend on the number of pattern pieces that must be placed on the folded edge, the fold that results in the most economic use of the fabric, the width of the fabric and the pattern size. Coming to the first layout, layout with the lengthwise fold. The fabric is folded with its selvage one on top of the other with the right sides inside and a fold on one side and parallel to the selvage. This type of layout is the simplest and easiest in which patterns which are to be on fold and to be cut in two pieces can be cut identically at the same time. Example blouse patterns. This is the most frequently used fold. Layout with the crosswise fold. When fabric cannot accommodate crosswise patterns, layout is made on crosswise fold. For a crosswise fold, fabric is usually folded so that the cut ends match. However, a crosswise fold can also be a partial fold. Coming to the open layout, when pattern pieces are asymmetrical, they have to be laid on open layout which have been spread out on a single layer with its right side facing down. This layout is suitable only for certain special design fabrics which are not common and for the same reason these are not economical and requires more time for laying and cutting. Coming to the combination layout. Some patterns call for fabric folds in a way that calls for a combination type of layout. This can be a combination of lengthwise and cross folds layout and a length fold and a open lay layout or a crosswise fold and a open layout. Coming to the double fold. When making a double fold, the fabric is folded twice along the lengthwise grain. This layout is used when many pattern pieces must be cut on fold. In this two selvages are folded in such a way that folds are along the sides. It may not be possible to lay out all pattern pieces at a time. For some, it has to have to be cut after refolding or opening out fast fold of the fabric. The points that need to be considered while fabric laying are Press the fabric well. Use a large, hard, flat table for fabric laying. Check if all the patterns have every detail. Note the best type of layout. Place the patterns on the right grain and place large patterns first towards the edges. Place similar patterns together and place the patterns close to each other to save fabric. 
Coming to the pattern details have to be considered. The first pattern detail that need to be considered is name of the pattern, cut number, on fold, grain, notches, placement of pocket, button, button holes and other accessories, position of pleat or other fullness, sewing lines, hem folds and position to be gathered. Let's see about the laying the patterns on the fabric. Fabric has to be prepared well that is it should be pre-shrunk and ironed before the patterns are placed on it. The fabric has to be spread neatly on a clean large table. One can even use a clean floor. Remember to use a surface bigger than fabric so that overlapping of the fabric or mismarking can be avoided. Coming to the first fabric knits. Knitted fabric is a special type of fabric made by interlooping of a single yarn. There are various varieties of knitted fabrics like single jersey and double jersey, tricot knits and rib. So out of these, jersey fabrics are normally used for garment construction. Let's see about the steps involved in marking, laying and cutting of jersey fabrics. Pulling or tearing should be avoided to straighten the fabric. Lay the folded edges straight on a flat surface or cutting table. Cut a straight crosswise line at right angle to fold the selvage. If the fabric is very slippery, a newspaper or butter sheet can be pinned to the fabric before laying straight on the table. Always place the pattern on the wrong side of the fabric. This prevents curling or rolling of the fabric. Beginners can use thin pins to pin the patterns before marking them. Mark the outline of the patterns using a tailor's chalk or red or blue pencil. Open layout is best for jersey fabrics irrespective of the type of garment. Take care to stay stitch the bias and curved edges. Coming to the next fabric, silk, rayon and laced fabric. These fabrics are very thin, slippery and delicate. Great care is required in marking and cutting these fabrics. Steps to be followed in preparing, laying, marking and cutting these fabrics are Pre-shrunk is not required for these fabrics. They can be used directly as purchased from the shops. To straighten the fabric, lay them on a table and pull in crosswise direction. Lay the fabric on a flat, smooth surface. Move your fingers smoothly over the fabric to remove creases. Even a clean floor can be used for this purpose. Make sure that the surface is bigger than the fabric. A newspaper or butter paper can be pinned to the back side of the fabric to prevent slipping of the fabric while placing the patterns. Place the patterns on the right side of the fabric. Right side can be identified by seeing and feeling. The right side is always brighter and smoother. Pin the patterns along with the fabric neatly in two or three places. Take care to pin the patterns along the lengthwise grain. Make sure that yarns are not pulled off while pinning the patterns. Cut the patterns along with the pinned patterns or one can mark them with the help of tailor's chalk. Stay stitch the curved edges, roll all the patterns and keep aside Till it is taken for sewing. Open layout and off-center layout are best suited for these types of fabrics, especially for beginners. Coming to the velvet, satin and pile fabrics. These fabrics have a brushed or raised surface and the pattern pieces must be laid out in one direction. The surface of velvet, velveteen, corduroy, penne velvet, synthetic suit, natural or man-made leather, fleece, camel's hair and some flannel is smooth in one direction and rough in opposite direction. Laying the patterns so that the rough texture runs downward gives a richer color to these fabrics. Lengthwise folds are suitable for pattern layout on napped fabrics. If more width is necessary for a pattern, cut the fabric on a cross grain. Then layer the fabric right sides together 
with the nap following the same direction on both pieces. Coming to the satin, this satin reflects the light and shades off. The fabric appears to have a different color when it is cut in different directions. Therefore, the pattern pieces must be cut in one direction. Steps involved in preparing, laying, marking and cutting these fabrics are Always roll these fabrics after purchase and carry it home. Leave it rolled till cutting. This prevents formation of wrinkles. If wrinkles are found, hang the fabric on a rod or string over a tub of hot water such that the steam passes over the fabric. Move your fingers slightly over the wrinkles. Take care to follow the direction of loops and pills. Pull the fabric gently to straighten it. Place the fabric with the right side facing the loops or pills facing you on the table. Place the patterns. Use a tailor's chalk for marking. Expert dress designers use needles to pin patterns in one or two places and cut the patterns without tracing it on the fabric. Open layout is the best preferred for these fabrics, especially because one has to maintain the direction of grain. Napped fabrics, satins, plates, stripes, one-way designs, large prints and border patterns need extra yardage and require special layouts. Plates and striped fabrics. These fabrics are printed or woven and have a pleasing effect when stitched. When pattern pieces are laid out on a plate or striped fabrics, they must be matched on horizontal and vertical grain lines at the seam lines, style lines and corresponding notches. Even plates. These plates are the same in both directions. This design creates a perfect alignment and is simple to match. To lay out a pattern on an even plate, fold the fabric on either the lengthwise or crosswise grain matching the plates on both layers. Pin through both layers at 4 inch interval to prevent slipping. One way plates. It is uneven in the lengthwise direction only. Pattern pieces are laid out in one direction. This type of plate is folded lengthwise or cut on a crosswise and relied with the right side together. An uneven plate. It is uneven both horizontally and vertically. The easiest way to lay out a pattern is on a single thickness of the fabric. The pattern of a garment to be laid out on this type of plate should have duplicate of each pattern piece. The pattern pieces are laid out on the right side of the fabric along the matching crosswise grain line to keep the design balanced. This procedure will aid in matching seams. On the uneven plate, it is extremely difficult to interlock pattern pieces and still match style lines and seams. Coming to the striped fabric, these can have stripes that are printed or woven, balanced or unbalanced, horizontal or vertical stripes. Stripes are easy to match because they run in only one direction. Follow the same layout preparation for the one way or even plates. Coming to the large, bold and widely spaced prints. These fabrics are placed so that they either balance on the body or give a pleasing effect to garments with a few seams. They are best used for large scale designs and prints that must be matched at style lines and seams. Coming to the border patterns. Border patterns are woven or printed patterns that run parallel to the selvage. In what is usually the most effective design, the pattern is placed horizontally on the crosswise grain with the border along the hem or selvage. If the border is used vertically, it is best to avoid a waistline seam so as not to distort the border pattern at the hem. Coming to the twill fabric, a twill is a fabric that appears to be patterned with fine diagonal lines. In woolen fabrics, the twill usually runs left to right, that is when it is worn the twill runs from the left shoulder to the right foot. But in cotton, the twill runs in reverse, that is from right to left. The twill should run in the same direction in all pattern pieces of the garment. If the right side of the garment is not confused with the wrong side 
and if the lengthwise grain marking on the pattern piece are correctly placed on the lengthwise and not on the crosswise grain of the fabric. On the wrong side of the fabric or on the crosswise grain, the twill will run in the opposite direction from that on the right side or on the lengthwise grain. Twill lines do not change the direction when turned upside down and therefore when a pattern is laid on a twill fabric, its pieces may be reversed in an up and down direction without mismatching of the twill lines when parts are joined in the garments. Pattern laying based upon the design. So design incorporated in a fabric should be emphasized to enhance the personality of the wearer. Hence pattern should be laid carefully to maintain the design and to harmonize it with the basic silhouette of the dress. Some of the most common types of designs and the method of laying patterns of them are bold designs. Large motifs can be used for all sort of garments but they look best when placed in an irregular fashion. This concept can be assured only with placement of the motifs. If a fabric has too many motifs arranged in a crowded manner or an irregular pattern, they can be placed next to each other, cut and sewn. Since the fabric does not follow a definite pattern, the garment will not look odd. When the material has well designed large motif repeated after equal distance, place these designs on the center of the pattern. Do not cut through large motifs because it is difficult to match seam lines. Pattern laying techniques vary based upon the designs also. So a dress designer should observe the type of designs and the repeat of the designs. Coming to the one way designs. One way designs can be printed or woven. Designs go in one direction. For example, group of flowers on a creeper can be woven from selvage to selvage in a lengthwise direction or a group of geometrical designs can be printed. When patterns are laid on these type of fabrics, one must carefully check if these lines on one pattern match with the design on the pattern which is joined. For example, if a blouse pattern with front opening is cut on a one way design, place the patterns in such a way that both the right and the left blouse patterns are alike. Coming to the stripes and plates. Stripes are straight lines running in lengthwise or crosswise direction. These stripes are called as vertical stripes and horizontal stripes. Stripes are most commonly used in shirt patterns. They can be cut in lengthwise and crosswise directions to create zigzag effect on garments. Collars, sleeves, pocket patterns can be cut in crosswise grain on vertical striped material to create interest to the garment. Plates are lines woven or printed in both lengthwise and crosswise direction. Plates create a checkered effect. Stripes and plates can be even or balanced and uneven or unbalanced. Even or balanced stripe and plates can be described as lines or bars arranged in a definite color or placement. The size of the bars and stripes are similar. The variation occurs in the type of the yarn or the color of the yarns used. Uneven or unbalanced is just the opposite. Here, bar and stripes of different sizes, colors and spacings are arranged in a symmetrical manner. Coming to the border designs. These designs run along one selvage only. They can be woven or printed. The design can be used along the hemlines of the bodies, skirt and a sleeve pattern. In order to maintain the design line, some patterns like yokes and collars are to cut on straight grain. These fabrics cannot be used for curved edges, garments like flared skirts. One must make sure that the hemlines are straight to follow this design. While placing patterns on these design fabrics, one must take care to match the designs. For example, the front and the back bodies patterns must have the same thread of the design at the side seam, but it need not be a similar in case of the abstract design. Open layout or off-centered lengthwise layout will suit these type of fabrics. Coming to the principles for economic layout. 
So, never mark or cut any pattern until trial shows the best location for all pieces. Make a temporary placement using small weights. Begin with the largest pattern piece at opposite ends of the cloth and work towards the center to fit in smaller pieces. Place the wider ends of the patterns at the cut ends of the fabric. Place all pieces close to each other so that you can save material which may be used for fullness of the same garment or used for making accessories like hair bands, rings, etc. Cut notches outward if possible or inward if material is not enough. Follow dovetailing technique for pattern laying. Dovetailing is placement of similar shaped patterns together. For example, a collar pattern can be placed closer to the arm skyline. This will help one to save the fabric. In case the fabric is insufficient for a pattern, then a small piece of fabric can be added to the fabric at the part where the pattern extends beyond the fabric. This technique is called as piecing. Balance the patterns and add small bits on either side of the patterns which will rest in good drape. For example, the tip of the skirt hem might extend beyond the fabric then place the pattern in the center such that small pieces can be added on either side. Coming to the next step, marking. Marking is the process of transferring the pattern lines and details like darts onto the fabric. It can be done using different methods like red and blue pencils, tailor's chalks, pencil and carbon paper. Points to be considered while marking. Check if all the pattern details are marked. Check if there is sufficient material for the garment. Select suitable method of marking, for example, tailor's chalk for patterns with cutting lines only and pencil and carbon paper to mark patterns for beginners because sewing lines can be marked. Don't mark using lead pen because it leaves black marks on the pattern. First marking tool is red and blue pencils. A mark pencil which is half red and half blue is normally used to mark the patterns. The red lines are used for front patterns and blue lines are used for back patterns. The patterns are placed on the fabric and the outlines are marked along the edges. It is the simplest and easiest method of marking and the main disadvantage is that the pattern details like darts, swing lines cannot be marked. Coming to the tailor's chalk. This is one of the easiest and simplest technique of transferring the pattern details onto fabric. Tailor's chalk is a triangle colored wax available in dark and light colors namely white, blue, red and yellow. The pattern is placed on the fabric and the outline is drawn using the tailor's chalk. The main disadvantage of this technique is that the pattern details sewing lines cannot be marked. Pencil and carbon paper. This is an oldest method of marking the patterns where a carbon paper is placed in between the pattern and the fabric. And then the pattern outlines and details are drawn using an ordinary pencil. In this technique, the swing lines and darts can also be transferred. Coming to the tracing wheel and dress markers carbon paper. Professional dress markers often use tracing wheel and dress markers carbon paper. This carbon paper comes in yellow, red or white colors. It does not get rubbed easily. White is best to be used. Red or yellow can be used for marking on white or cream colored fabrics. The tracing board is required to mark patterns with a tracing wheel. Coming to the tracing wheel, it is a 6 inch long device with a wooden or plastic handle at one edge and a small 1 cm movable wheel at the other. The wheel is designed with finely shaped points. To mark the patterns, one should place the fabric firmly on a tracing board. Confirming the position of the patterns, insert the dressmaker's carbon slowly in between the pattern and the fabric. Move the tracing wheel over the cutting and sewing lines neatly. Small dotted lines are marked onto the fabric. Coming to the tailor's tracks. This type of marking the patterns are suited for thin and delicate fabrics like silk. It is of great help to beginners because it marks the right and left sides and the right and the wrong sides at the same time 
and at the same location. It is fairly permanent and visible from both sides. It can be described as long tacks or running stitches along the pattern lines through the pattern and fabric to hold the boat together. Contrast color cotton threads are used for tacking. For example, to tack a pattern on a red color fabric, pink, yellow, orange, blue, black or white color threads can be used. This thread should be conspicuously seen on the fabric. Tailor stacking can be done following the steps. Place the fabric on the flat smooth surface. Check the patterns and place it in the most economical manner. Take a long double contrast color thread on a fine needle. Prick the needle through the pattern into the fabric and make small running stitches. Leave long loops between the two stitches made. Move around the patterns and tack the whole patterns neatly. After all patterns are tacked, cut the threads or loops between the stitches. Remove the patterns gently. Care should be taken to leave the cut threads at the points where stitches are made. These threads act as dotted lines showing the patterns on the fabric to be cut. Open layout and combination layout can be marked using tailor stacks. Coming to the next step, cutting. Cutting is a method of piecing the fabric into suitable sizes such that can be sewed together to form a neat garment. Cutting requires sharp shears. The factors that can be recognized before cutting sizes are Short nap. Those with a short nap are cut to have the nap going up. For example, corduroy, velveteens and suit cloth. An exemption is broadcloth which is cut with the nap going down. Long nap. Long nap fabrics are cut with the nap going down. An example is a fleece or camel's hair coating. One way design. If a print is designed to go in one direction, then every piece of the garment must be cut to lie in that one direction. Off grain designs. If the designs on the fabric is stamped off grain in its manufacture, the completed or garment cannot ever appear to be grain perfect. Plates or stripes. Most plates and stripes and some prints require matching or planned placement. If a plate or check is one fourth inch or less in distance from one completed design to another, it is never necessary to match it. Cutting pile fabrics. In cutting pile fabrics such as fleece coating and velveteen, when the right side are placed together, one side of the pile will constantly push against the other. For perfection in cutting pile fabrics, place together the smooth or wrong sides of the fabric. Coming to the selvage. Rarely it is necessary to cut off selvage before cutting out a garment. Use it what, whenever possible as a seam finish. If it is appears to be tight or drawn in some fabrics, snip it at intervals. Interesting selvage is often used as a trimming detail on the right side of the garment. Steps involved in cutting a fabric are Keep the ends and sides of the material parallel with the table edge while cutting so that the grain never shifts. Hold the fabric firmly in the left hand at the point where it is cut and cut using right hand. Cut the fabric using long smooth strokes to the full length of the shears. Don't lift the fabric very high from the table. Try to move round the table and cut the fabric. If the fabric is pulled, the grain of the garment patterns will change. Cut on accurate lines. Notches should be cut wherever necessary. Cut it outwards. Do not remove the patterns until all patterns are cut. Today, we have discussed about handling different fabrics in terms of laying, marking and cutting. Thank you.